Hey everybody, uh, this is a pretty fast lesson, the set of real numbers. So we're going to just talk about different numbers here. So there's our common core strand. It's been the same common core strand for the last couple of lessons. So how can we describe the relationship between the set of real numbers? Okay, we already know that the set of rational numbers consists of whole numbers, integers, fractions, and then decimals. Uh, but they have to be repeating or terminating decimals, okay? The set of real numbers consists of the set of all those rational numbers and the set of irrational numbers. Irrational numbers are not rational numbers. And vice versa, rational numbers are not irrational numbers. So, natural numbers, the numbers that they started with thousands of years ago were natural numbers. One, two, three, four, you know, like they had... You know, one one cow, two cows, three cows. So, and then and then zero came into the picture. So those are called whole numbers. They're natural numbers, including zero. And then negative numbers came into the picture. So negative numbers were all the whole numbers and all the negative um, whole numbers also. So from uh, negative infinity to you know, but they're integers. They're they're counting numbers and all the negative counting numbers. Then we started dealing with fractions and decimals. So those were called rational numbers. And, as, and, there, and this is A over B right here. So this is A over B, where A and B are both integers right there. Okay, And rational numbers are also um, repeating, or non, uh, or non, repeating decimals uh, or terminating decimals. And then an irrational number is a real number, but it's not... It's not a rational number, okay? So here's a, a Venn diagram that describes everything, okay? So here we have over here, so these are all real numbers. Rational numbers are not irrational numbers, so that's why they're separated by this line. So the square root of any number that's not a perfect square, okay? The square root of 2, square root of 17. But if I had the square root of 16, like that would be over here. In fact, right here, the square root of 4 is actually 2. So that goes in the whole numbers. The whole numbers start at 0. And I don't have one in here for natural numbers, but natural numbers... Uh, would be included in the whole numbers right here. So, um, so uh, natural numbers would um, uh, be like a little circle inside of here that would start with one and then two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, all the way up to plus infinity. All the positive integers right here. Remember, whole numbers starts at zero. Then integers has all of the whole numbers, all of the natural numbers, and all of the negative integers also okay and then rational numbers these are all rational numbers right here but rational numbers also include any fraction that can't be reduced any repeating decimal 0 0.33333 remember this was one third here's a negative fraction that's it but as long as that's an integer and that's an integer here's a terminating decimal where it stops 4.5 Okay, square root of 2 goes on forever and ever and ever. It doesn't repeat, doesn't stop. It goes as far as your calculator will let it go. Okay, the square root of 11. So negative square root of 11 is the same. These are irrational numbers. You guys have heard of this before. Pi, okay? Pi comes from the circle, you guys. So, uh, anyways, pi is an irrational decimal. 3.141592, and I don't know after that, but anyways, that's the value of pi, okay? All right, so... Those are all, and they're all real numbers, okay? So write all the names that applies to each number. Okay, so 5. Can 5 be um, a rational number where it starts at 1 and then 2 and 3? Yeah, so, I'm sorry, natural number. Yes, that's a natural number. It's also a whole number. It's also an integer. It's also a real number. So did I say all of that? So it's not a perfect square. Oh, I'm supposed to have a square root on that. Okay, no. Uh, let's just keep it like that, you guys. I'm going to change this answer. So if it was a square root, um, uh, then it would be it would be that answer. But I made a mistake. So let's see. So I'm going to just say uh, 5 is, sorry, um, it's um, natural, it's whole, it's an integer, and it's real. Okay? So 5. If it was the square root of 5, it would be irrational number. Okay? So... I'm going to um, replace that answer in all of these because I give these lessons to teachers in my district. Okay, this one here, you guys, is a terminating decimal, so it stops. So it's just a rational number and um, uh, a real number, okay? So it's rational and real, okay? Now this one here, you guys, the square root of 81 is 9, and 9 over 9 equals 1. Well, that's an integer. It's also a, a, a natural number. It's also a, 
uh, a whole number. It's a. It's also a real number. Okay. So um, a natural, a whole. It's an integer. One is an integer. It's a rational number because it's one over one, and it's also a real number right there. Okay. All right. So let's keep going here. So uh, what types of numbers are between 3.1 and 3.9 on a number line? Well, all kinds of numbers. There's infinitely many numbers between 3.1 and 3.9. For example, 3.2 is on the number line between those guys and it's a terminating decimal which means it's rational and real okay but the square root of 11 is also some number that's in between 3.1 and 3.9 it's 3.31666 and so on and so on and so on so um, that's an irrational number right there so the answer is rational and irrational and real okay rational covers whole numbers it covers uh, integers it covers um, um, uh, but there are no whole numbers in between 3.1 and 3.9, so just fractions and any repeating or non-repeating or non-repeating non-terminating decimals, okay? All right, so same thing here. Write all the names that apply to each number. A baseball player p has pitched 12 and two-thirds of an inning. Okay, so that's over several games probably right there. So 12 and two-thirds, since it's the two-thirds part, that is a rational and a real number. Okay, the length of the side of a square not that that but that has uh, sorry let me get rid of this uh, that part right there let me back that out okay that uh, has an area of 10 uh, square yards well if the area is 10 square yards that means um, something times itself equals 10 okay so so x must be the square root of 10 so each side is the square root of 10 oh, well since root 10 since 10 is not a perfect square that's an irrational number so irrationals are also real all the numbers that we deal with are real until we get to integrated math 3 we're going to deal with imaginary numbers oh boy can't you wait all right so understanding the set and subsets of real numbers okay so by understanding which sets are subsets of types of numbers we can verify whether statements about the relationship between sets are true or false so for example tell whether the statement is true or false and explain all irrational numbers are real numbers. Well, that is true. Every irrational number and every rational number in, um, uh, is included in the set of real numbers. So uh, the irrational numbers are a subset of real numbers. Okay, so if it's true, it's a subset. No rational number are whole numbers. Well, that's false, you guys, because a whole number can be written as a fraction that has a denominator of 1. So every whole number inc is included in the set of rational numbers. The whole numbers instead are a subset of rational numbers. Okay, rational numbers are not a subset of whole numbers. Not all rational numbers are whole numbers, but all whole numbers are rational numbers, so the whole numbers would be subset of rational numbers. Okay, so give an example of a, a rational number that is a whole number and show that the number is both a whole and a rational. So I chose 8, so 8 is the same as 8 over 1, so 8 over 1 shows it as a fraction of A over B, means it's rational, and since 8 is a whole number, it's also rational. Okay, let's keep going. So they want us to do a few more of these. So all rational numbers are integers. Well, that's false because all, all fractions are not integers. Every integer is a rational number. So integers are a subset of rational numbers, but not the other way around. Not every rational number is an integer. Okay, so for example, the rational numbers 3 fifths or negative 5 halves, they're rational, but they're not integers. Okay, how about this? Some irrational numbers are integers. Well, remember, they can't be irrational and rational, you guys. And all integers are rationals. So this one has to be false. Real numbers are either rational or irrational numbers. They can't be both. So some integers are rational numbers, and they can't be irrational numbers, okay? Oh, I'm sorry, since uh, all the integers are rational numbers, they can't be it can't be irrational numbers. Okay, so identifying sets for real-world situations. Okay, so real numbers can be used to represent real-world quantities. So highways, you guys, they have posted speed limit signs that are represented by natural numbers, like 55 miles per hour. Okay, integers appear on ther thermometers, you guys. So, so it goes from, you know, 50 degrees to like maybe negative 12 degrees. Okay, rational numbers are used in many daily activities, including kit cooking. So, for example, ingredients in a recipe are often in fraction. Whoops, I misspelled that. Fraction. Uh, given in fraction amounts, C T I O N. Let's see, is that going to give me? There we go. Such as two thirds cups of flour. Okay. 
All right, so identify the set of numbers that best describes each situation, and then explain your, or your reasoning, okay? So the number of people wearing glasses in a room. Can there be 0.5 people wearing glasses in a room? No, you either have zero people or one people or two people. I wear glasses. So, so that's the set of whole numbers because whole number starts at zero. So you could have zero people wearing glasses, but they're all counting numbers of people wearing glasses. How about this? Circumference of a flying disc has a diameter of 8, 9, 10, 11, or 14 inches. Okay, this one is very deceptive. I don't want you to focus on the 8, 9, 10, 11, or 12, you guys, because they want us to know the circumference right here. The circumference is pi times the diameter. So these are the diameters, so the circumference is always pi times any one of these numbers. And pi is an irrational number, so the set of irrational numbers best describes this. Each circumference is the product of pi and the diameter, and since pi is irrational, each multiple of pi is also going to be irrational, so that's the set of irrational numbers, which is also real. Okay, let's, get, let's keep going. So identify the set of numbers that best describes these. So the amount of water in a glass as it evaporates. Can we have um, fractions of amount of water that's evaporating? I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to say rational on this, you guys. Those are rational numbers. Uh, the amount can be any number that's greater than zero, okay? How about, um, uh, uh, now we can't have, say um, uh, like natural numbers, those are integers greater than zero. Can't say whole numbers, those are zero, one, two, three, four, they could be fractions. How about the weight of a person? Can they be a fraction of a pound? Same thing, same answer. So that one's going to be rational numbers. A person's weight can be a decimal such as 83.5 pounds. Okay, all right you guys, I hope that uh, lesson makes sense and take care.